If you're a fan of D&D, you know that one of the most exciting parts of the game is the endless possibilities of storylines and scenarios that can be created. But sometimes it can be challenging to come up with new and interesting ideas, especially if you're a DM who has been running games for a while. That's where AI comes in. In this video, we'll explore how artificial intelligence can be used to generate unique and exciting D&D adventures, taking the burden off of DMs and allowing them to focus on creating immersive experiences for their players. So sit back, grab your dice, and let's dive into the world of AI-powered D&D. By the way, the script for everything I just said was generated by AI. So yeah, stick around. Welcome to Geek Philosophy, where we love geeky wisdom. If you're new to the channel, my name is Brian, and we release new videos weekly, so please consider subscribing and turning on the notifications so you don't miss out on any of the content. And I really mean that because I've found that most of you that watch aren't actually subscribers, so, you know, subscribe. Thanks. AI tools have become pretty popular these days. You've probably already seen several online or even used one to create your new social media profile picture, but there was a tool that I saw that got me curious about coming up with adventures for D&D, and I was surprised by how well it worked. And there may be a place for these types of tools for game masters and DMs who are looking for a little inspiration for their home games. So today, I thought I would just share my screen and see what I could come up with on the fly. Let's do it. I'm gonna be using ChatGPT, which is uh, chat.openai.com if you wanna check it out for yourself. And let's just see what we can come up with. You can see from the text on screen here that I actually used this, as I said before, minus the first sentence to create the intro that we did just a minute ago. So let me go ahead and start a new chat. I'm gonna start out by just asking it the most basic about writing an adventure. I'm gonna ask it just to write a D&D adventure for me. So I asked it write a D&D adventure for my gaming group and you can see it's based on a chat. So it goes through as if it's talking back to me. Sure, here's a short adventure and it's just plugging along. You can see it in real time this is what's happening we've got the title of the adventure we've got the synopsis the setting act one so i'm guessing this is going to be more than one act yep here comes act two and then as you can see it's kind of going through because i said for my adventuring group it's really thinking about you know what are some of the key things that need to be put in for a three act structure probably let's see if it goes in act four Three act structure, look it up if you aren't familiar, but it's a very common storytelling structure. Yeah, here we go. So it's ending with, I hope this adventure idea is helpful for your group. Let me know if you have any questions or if you'd like me to expand on any particular aspect of the adventure. Let's say that again, if you'd like me to expand on any particular aspect of the adventure. That is important as we go through this. So let's see what we've got so far. Again, this is just me writing write a DD adventure for my gaming group is this going to be the best quality adventure you've ever had no but it's going to get the imagination going so let's think about what it's telling us and see if we can riff off of this so first the missing artifact classic going and finding something that's missing and valuable uh, synopsis very short synopsis a valuable artifact has gone missing from the local museum and the group has been hired to track it down and return it Okay, not bad. Setting. So the adventure can take place in a fantasy city. So this is giving us a option here. So the adventure can take place in a fantasy sitting with the museum located in the center of town. And the artifact in question is an ancient magical crystal with the power to grant wishes. It's rumored to be guarded by powerful magical defenses and whoever possesses it is said to have been granted great power and wealth. Yeah, it makes sense. Act one, the group is approached by the museum curator who explains that the artifact has gone missing and offers a generous reward. Not bad. She provides the group with a description of the artifact and any information she has about its whereabouts. The group can also gather information from other sources in the city and sh uh, she talks. Okay, great. So this is good. Beginning first act. Second act, the group investigates. They discover it has been taken by a group of thieves who were planning to sell it to a wealthy collector. Okay, it's a heist that they had and they're going to sell it to their 
a uh, person that was their benefactor. Not a problem there. The thieves may put up a fight, but ultimately a group manages to retrieve the artifact. And re okay, so this is assuming in, in the second part of this adventure that the group is going to get the artifact and bring it back. But then in Act 3, upon returning the artifact, the group is rewarded and with the promised payment, Curator reveals that the artifact is actually a fake. There's a plot twist here, guys. And the group was unknowingly helping protect the true artifact, which was hidden in a secret location for its own protection. Nice. This is a nice little plot twist to a seemingly straightforward story. I don't think you're going to get this every time, by the way. Uh, I've done this several times and I haven't come up with this one. This has not been uh, a repeat adventure. I've done several inputs to this to test it out. And this hasn't been one that I've seen so far. This is actually one of the better ones. What makes me wonder is if the AI is learning from the encounters that it's having for me, but also from anybody else that's doing this. So maybe we can make it better by giving it a shot. We're going to expand on this and I'm going to be polite with the chat because they were polite with me. So excellent. Can you expand on acts one, two and three? Certainly. Here's a more detailed version of the adventure. So we got the same adventure and they're going to be hopefully expanding on that. One thing I want you to notice, they're smart enough that I switched to using the numerals one, two, and three instead of uh, Roman numerals like they did before. So they still understood that. All right. So they're expanding on this. The setting is now called Riverdale. So this is a classic uh, Riverdale as a name. Um, it's got a rich history and the group is approached by Miss Thompson, the curator. So now it's fleshing it out and giving some names. So the group can, group can gather additional information by speaking to other NPCs in the city. Act two, the group investigates. They discover that the artifact has indeed been taken by a group of thieves. And then they can confront the thieves directly or sneak into uh, retrieve the artifact while the thieves are distracted. Either way, they manage to retrieve the artifact and return it to the museum. So that's, it sounds a little railroady, but what we're doing here is we're building out the structure of the story. This is an idea. This isn't saying you're going to play this exactly how it is written, um, but it gives you, you know, something to work with. Um, then it expanded on Act 3. They talked about what was going on. I'd like to change the location. So I'm going to change it from... Uh, Riverdale to a city in one of my best friends fantasy worlds uh, that we worked on together when I was growing up so can you change Riverdale to Simpac now Simpac is not known to this tool and we're going to keep that in mind as we go forward because this is a homebrew fantasy city uh it's something in my friend carrie's um world of avarice so it's not something i think that the uh, ai will know what to build in from there but um there are other ways that i can change this i'm going to let this do its thing first and then as it's going through and just making that slight uh, correction. I want to add in after this a different change to location. So I'm going to say the mountain city of Simpac and see if there's any change to what happens um, to what's going on with the SETI. Just by adding in the word mountain, I want to see if they do any other changes to Acts 1, 2, or 3, if there's any details that change by twisting the setting just a little bit. Um, maybe it won't make a difference at all based on the fact that this is in a city and that they're going to find the hideouts um, for the thieves, but who knows? Maybe it will. Just tweaking a few things as you go is a really good way to build your own adventure and to make things seem a little different, but yeah, let's see. Let's see how this goes. So let's wait for it to finish up here. Great. Oh, by the way, that they get a choice of magic items they can choose from at the end. Those are pretty good. I like that. All right. So um, can you change this to be in a mountain city setting? Set in a mountain city. The missing artifact still. We're good there. I'm looking through as we go takes place in a mountain city called Thornhold. I didn't tell it to keep the name Simpac, so that's fine, but it did come up with kind of a cool one. So the mountain city called Thornhold, which is known for its rich history, rich history and cultural artifacts. The museum is known in the center. So it didn't really change anything there. It's still a mountain city. They still have Miss Thompson. They still have this whole uh, set of um, defenses by magic for the museum and all that stuff. So this is really good. 
honestly, I like where this is going. You guys take this for your own adventures uh, and flesh it out as you need to. Now, this does not build your maps. It doesn't create art for you. You can find other tools for that, but you can use this as a good um, starting point to do a whole campaign, or this can just be one adventure that you're going, getting in, getting the artifact, getting back. So um, this can uh, be spread out over multiple sessions if you want to make each one of these acts longer um, and have subsequent steps to it. That's up to you. But you can see that the fact that it's pulling in information and adjusting a few things based on what I'm telling it is really important. So now I'm going to change something. So, so I'm going to say, can you change the museum to a temple all right so the temple so the missing artifact has gone missing from the local temple and a small group has been hired to track it down and return it the adventure takes place in a mountain city called thornhold which is known for its rich history and cultural artifacts the temple is located in the center of town nestled in the heart of the mountain range not a whole lot change here the group is approached by the high priest of the temple so now it's a high priest we're not talking to miss thompson anymore it's father marcus who explains that the artifact has gone missing with a generous reward and so on similar 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 we're good there so uh it cut this can happen this cut out so um, the group can gather information with other NPCs. It just it just stops. So I'm going to say regenerate response. All right. So now we're into Act Two. We're fleshing out Act Two. It's talking about investigating uh, to discover the artifact has been taken by the thieves. That's great. Um, they track down the thieves at the secret hideout in the Thornholds Mountain Passes. So remember, we changed it to mountain. So now the hideout is in the mountain passes where they are are in the midst of an argument about who can do what with the artifact. That's great. I love the expansion of some of the stuff here and the thought process. And then they get to act three, they're gonna bring it back home. Okay, so you can see how we can expand on things. Now I'm gonna add something or ask it to add something. So who are the NPCs the party can talk with or speak with? In this adventure, the group can speak with a variety of NPCs to gather information about the missing artifact and the thieves who stole it. These NPCs might include other adventurers in the local adventurers guild might have heard rumors, scholars at the city's libraries, local merchants and shopkeepers and all kinds of stuff. So they can also encounter other characters during the investigation, such as guards or members of the city watch as the GM you can decide on the specific NPCs. I like how it's telling us what to do as the GM telling you what a GM is, telling you, you know, hey, you're supposed to do some of this stuff too, but let's push it a little bit and see. Can you provide a description of the shopkeeper? Certainly. Here's a description of the shopkeeper NPC that the group might encounter. The shopkeeper is a middle-aged human man with graying hair and a thinning mustache. He runs a small cluttered store in the market district of Thornhold, selling a variety of goods ranging from everyday necessities to rare and exotic items. He has a reputation for being a good source of information and has a wide network of contacts and is known to be well-connected in the city. And then it tells you what happens when the group speaks with him. He seems somewhat nervous and evasive. He admits to hearing rumors about the artifact. So it gives not only sort of a description there, but then this. So what is the shopkeeper's name? Up to you. <laughs> Choose a name that fits with the setting and the character's personality. Or you could simply use a generic name like Bob or Jenna if you prefer. Alternatively, you can choose to leave the shopkeeper's open name and let the players decide what to call him or her. That's good. Can you give me a few example names for the shopkeeper? Certainly, here are a few examples that you can consider. So Marcus, Rufus, Greta, Farid, uh, Penelope, Arik, or Eric. Yeah, so this is really helpful in kind of prompting things. So you can see how I'm just asking it questions and then see it what gives me. So I like this. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do is can you provide me with a overview summary of the game that I can provide to potential players? 
Here is an overview summary for the missing artifact to generate a general sense of the game to the players. All right. In this D&D adventure, the group has been hired to track down and return a valuable artifact that has gone missing from a local temple. The artifact is ancient, magical crystal with powers to grant wishes, and is rumored to be guarded by powerful magical defenses. This is great. Whoever possesses it, the group can need to gather information, to see who stole it. The adventure is set in a fantasy setting suitable of a group of three to five players of level one to three, expected to take four to six hours to complete, depending on the group's play style and the decision. This is something that you would see on the back of a published adventure module. So I really think this is a good way to at least get things started, guys. It's not perfect. But the more you plug in and the more you change things. Oh, let's just one more thing. Let's just see if we change one little detail and see how this might affect the entire adventure. Can you change the setting to be an underwater kingdom? Certainly. Here's the revised version of the adventure set in an underwater kingdom. Still the missing artifact. It's in an underwater palace and it takes place in Atlantis. Okay, so the group has been hired to return and take it. The palace is located in the center of the kingdom in the heart of a vast coral reef. This is not in a mountain range anymore. The artifact in question is an ancient magical crystal, crystal with the power to So everything else is pretty much the same. Although we've got the palace's ruler, Queen Marina, to explain that the artifact is going. So you can see how changing the setting is now changing several items within the story. So I think you get the point here. This is something that's actually a really good way to get the ball rolling. It's not going to do everything for you, but it can really jumpstart your imagination. And if nothing else, I think that's what this is best used for. So, all right. Okay. There you have it. We've composed an adventure concept in real time with the help of artificial intelligence. Is it perfect? No. But is it a viable addition to my DM toolbox? Yeah, I think so. I can imagine using this as a starting point to flesh out other adventure ideas. I already have some that I would probably plug into here just to see what it does. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I always end with a little bit of geeky wisdom, so I thought it would be fun to ask the AI to provide a few choices for me to end this video and wrap things up with a quote. And this was my favorite from the list of quotes it gave me. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Cheers.